Hati, hati, hati. The distress. Distress. Tongfu. Hara. Oh, you who remove. Oh, who you remove? Oh, who you transform? Oh, who you pass? Ah, dita. Pass ah, dita. Has approach. Has approach. Come, come. Therefore, Pawaya, please protect. Enam, Kim, Kuru, place. Hasta Pankajam, your lotus hand. Sirasi on the head. On the head of Thompson. Amoshia. Amoshia. His. His. Akila. Akila. All. All. Kalmasha. Kalmasha. Sin. Apaham. Which eradicates. Which eradicates. Not siltry. Translation. Here is the son of. Here is the son of Bomashura. Frightened, he is approaching your lotus feet, since you remove the distress of all who seek refuge in you. Please protect him. Place your lotus hand, which dispels all sins, upon his head. 因為你驅除所有向你託備之人的不幸,請保護他,請將你清除所有罪惡的蓮花手放在他的頭上。Purport. Here the earth goddess seeks protection for her grandson, who has been frightened by all the terrible violent events that just took place. 要知,這裡地球的神為他被高空發生所有恐怖,暴力事件,嚇壞的宣言,尋求保護。Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavityo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama So we're hearing how Lord Krishna, uh, after marrying eight, princi eight, eight princesses, is now killing the demon Bomashur. Bomashur had performed many atrocities. He had, he had kidnapped 16,000 young princesses and he was holding them in his prison house and then he had taken the earrings from Mother Diti, the mother of the demigods and he had taken the umbrella from Varuna, the god of the ocean and he'd taken the playground from the, the summit of the Mandara mountain, which is the playground of the demigods. So Indra had gone to Lord Krishna to complain. Indra was not able to do anything about the demon. So he asked Lord Krishna to help. So Lord Krishna had gone there to the king, the palace, at the fort of this Bomasur. 
And the demon had great defenses to protect him from any intruders. And there was a big demon called Mura. With three heads. He was very terrifying. But Lord Krishna killed him. And then Lord Krishna had to overcome the different uh, there were weapons of the weapons of the air, weapons of fire, weapons of water, who were all there to protect the demon. But Krishna, Krishna removed all these obstacles. And then he killed the demon Bomasu. And so then we heard how Mother Bhumi, the mother of Bhomasura, had come to offer prayers to Lord Krishna. And she's glorifying Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul in the heart of all living entities. The one who knows everything and who's everywhere. And the, there's no cause independent of him. There's no cause. cause. No, nothing happens which is independent. Krishna. Creation, maintenance and destruction all go on under his direction. So Mother Bhumi now brings the son of Bomashura, in other words, her grandson before Lord Krishna. Now she she tells Lord Krishna that this young the boy is terrified. Of course, we would you know, also be badly shaken if we had to witness such events. If you see somebody come and kill your father in front of you, you know, it's, it's a very horrifying experience. So Mother Bhumi has brought this boy before Lord Krishna and she's asking Lord Krishna that please give him shelter to a lotus feet. She asked him, please place your lotus hand upon his head. Of course, Lord Nishimidev did that to Prahlad Maharaj also. And after Lord Nishring, they placed his hand on the head of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj could offer nice prayers. So Mother Bhumi is very uh, understanding about the position of Lord Krishna. She is in full knowledge. And she, as she says here in her prayer, that uh, Lord Krishna can remove the distress of anybody who takes shelter in Him. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, give up all forms of religion and just surrender to Me. I will free you from all sins. Do not fear. So if we take shelter of Lord Krishna, then we become freed of fear. So Mother Bhumi wants her grandson not to be like her son. She's seen her son Bomasura killed by Lord Krishna and she saw how he was a demon and how it 
was fitting that he was killed by Krishna. But naturally she doesn't want to see that her grandson will be like her like his father. So this is very nice actually that Mother Bhumi is uh, thinking like this. She wants her grandson to be a devotee and to take shelter. Prabhupada tells the story that there was this one uh, person, he grew up to be very sinful and performed many crimes and he even became a murderer. So when he was arrested, then he, then he was sentenced to die. But before, before he was given the death sentence, they asked him, is there anything, final thing you would like before we before you get the death sentence? So he said, yes, he said, could you just tell my mother to come here? I just wanted to see her. So his mother came. And he asked his mother, he said, just could you come here? I just want to say something. And she came, and then the man who was going to got the death sentence, she he bit her, his mother's ear. And, and they said, well, why did you do this? They said, because this mother of mine, she didn't tell me what, that I was doing so many bad things. She let me be a nonsense. She let me go ahead with all my sins, with all my crimes, and now I'm going to get that. I'm going to be killed for it. She should have stopped me long ago. She's my mother. She should have trained me. So here it's a little different. Uh, Bomi, uh, she did train her son in the beginning. But the son went away and fell into bad association. And with bad association, of course, then you lose all Okay, we'll read some more verses. Text number 32. Sukadeva Goswami said, Thus entreated by Goddess Bhumi in words of humble devotion, the Supreme Lord bestowed fearlessness upon her grandson and then entered Bomasura's palace, which was filled with all manner of riches. So Lord Krishna is willing to give shelter to the, the son of Bhomasura, although his father was a great demon, Lord Krishna accepted the, the grandson and, and gave him shelter and gave him fearlessness. Because, because she, he knows that the, the grandson is now in the care of Bhumi, and Bhumi is a good devotee. She will guide him and protect him. So it's described how Lord Krishna enters into the palace of Bomasura, and the palace is very opulent. Well, it's the nature of the demons that they often enjoy the opulences of the material. 
因為就係惡魔嘅本性啊！佢哋喜係喜歡係享受一切嘅感官。So, we're going to hear what happens inside the palace. 我哋咧睇下喺宮殿發生啲咩事。Text thirty-three. There, Lord Krishna saw sixteen thousand royal maidens, whom Bhoma had taken by force from various kings. 三十三篇原文係講，主決實喺嗰度睇到一萬六千位高貴嘅少女，都係被包含用暴力從不同國王嗰度攞嚟翻嚟。Part four, Sri Lanka Sri Swami provides evidence from the sage Parasara, as quoted in the Vishnu Purana, to the effect that there were actually sixteen thousand one hundred. Royal maidens in prison in Boma's palace. 要俾舒達差咪提供咗引自 Vishnu Purana， 從聖人 Parasara 嗰度得到嘅證據。實際上有一萬六千一百位貴族少女被囚禁喺 Boma 嘅宮殿。So then the verse is quoted. Within the maidens' quarters, O wise one. The Lord of unequal prowess found sixteen thousand one hundred princesses. 我知位啲人啊喺少女嘅住所，佢有無比力量嘅主，發現咗一萬六千一百位公主。Another relevant verse from the Vishnu Purana is as follows. 咁另外一個來自 Vishnu Purana 另一個詩節咧嘅相關詩節就係。The demon Bomasura. Kidnap the unmarried daughters of demigods, siddhas, asuras, and kings, O Janardhan, and imprison them in his palace. O Janardhan, O Mo Bhamasura, the Bhagavad Gita Bhagavad Gita, Sita, Asura, and the Gods of the Gods, may find their lovers, and they are held in his palace. So here we see a little a discussion from quote because it, in the in the verse in the Bhagavatam it says sixteen thousand girls, but there's from other scriptures it says sixteen thousand one hundred. Okay. 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 Verse which is quoted describes it something of the the caste or the origin of these girls. 咁亦都睇到係誒誒描述有其他嘅誒等級嘅人。Some of them were the daughters of demigods. 有一啲係半神人嘅女誒女兒。Gives us some idea how powerful this demon was. 咁亦睇到嗰個惡魔係幾咁強大有嘅。And some were the daughters of Siddhas, in other words, perfected beings. 有啲啊女兒咧係 Siddha 嗰邊嚟嘅，本身啊即係有啲完美，完完美師。And then there were other girls who were the daughters of Asuras. 另外一啲啊女孩子咧係由 Asura 嗰邊嚟嘅。So, so even the demons, although he's a demon himself, he kidnapped also the daughters of other demons. 咁雖然翻翻出嚟嘅惡魔咧，佢竟然係攞咗其他惡魔嘅。And then the daughters of kings as well. So he didn't just take ordinary, simple village girls. So these are not ordinary, simple village girls. He didn't just take the, you know, common ladies. He took very high class ladies. He didn't just take the, you know, common ladies. He didn't just take the, you know, common ladies. He didn't just take the, you know, common ladies. He didn't just take the Much women, but young girls. Princesses. And he took them by force and he kept them prisoner. So you can just imagine what kind of nature this person had. Such a strong desire to enjoy opulence. People often want to imitate Lord Krishna. So many people are trying to imitate Lord Krishna. They hear about Krishna dancing Rasa Lila. 
The women became enchanted when they saw that most excellent of males enter. In their minds they each accepted him who had been brought there by destiny as their chosen husband. So, certainly it must have been a great relief for these girls who have been put into prison and they're held there in, this, in confinement by this demon and then finally they see Lord Krishna. You know, when we're in distress, we will often pray to Krishna. But somehow these girls were so fortunate that Lord Krishna actually appeared personally to them. So, they, and, and the verse is that they all, they wanted to immediately accept Krishna as their husband. Because they have no nobody, they have no shelter, their parents, their family won't, won't have anything more to do with them. Because they're no longer pure, they're, so they cannot be good for anything. But of course they become pure because they're thinking of Krishna. So even their contamination, whatever contamination was put on them by the demon, was taken away by their thought of Lord Krishna. And it says, Krishna who had been brought there by destiny. So we all have our different destinies, so that they, they, they must have had some very, very special destiny. But on one hand, they suffered so much that they were put into prison, taken from their homes, or put into prison by this demon. But in in contrast to all that, they're so fortunate that Krishna is going to accept them as, their, as his wives. So we see the people tolerate and go on with their devotional service, then they become glorious. They become? They become successful. Tate nu kampam susamik shamana panjana evatma kritam vipakam rigvabapu vir vidadan namaste chiveta yomukti pade sadayabak. Right? One who tolerates all the difficulties of life accepts them to be reactions due to his past karma but goes on with his devotional service. Then he becomes qualified to become my honorable devotee. So we have to tolerate the difficulties when we come when they come. So we have to go on with our devotional service. Just like these girls, they've been put through so many difficulties. But they didn't give up the shelter of Lord Krishna. 
With the thought, may providence grant that this man becomes my husband. Each and every princess absorbed her heart in contemplation of Krishna. So, it, it's a little strange, and from this verse it will appear that, that these girls are not actually aware of Krishna's identity as the Supreme but they've just seen this man. They don't know who is this man. But they immediately, immediately every one of them, they accept this man. The, so the person who is actually dear to everyone is Krishna. In material world, you know, we're thinking, you know, I love this person, I'm, this is my son, or this is my family, and we have a special affection for them. <coughs> but the person, we, the person we really love is Krishna. Because you can't love the dead body. Right, when the body's dead, you can't, you can't, you, you don't have love for that. When the person leaves the body, you want to burn the body. You have to get rid of it quick. So we don't really love the body. What we really love is the soul within the body. Right, this was a, this was seen in the past time of uh, when Lord Brahma stole away all the cows in the cowherd boy. Right, all the cows, and one day uh, when Brahma stole all the cows and cowherd boys, Krishna took their place. But nobody knew Krishna was taking the place of all the cows in the cow. But then one day, because it, because Brahma took them for a moment of his time, and that moment was one year. So for one year, Krishna was playing the part of all these cowherd boys and all the cows. Just like we said, Krishna expand, can expand itself many times. So he when he was a young boy, he expanded himself as cowherd boys and as cows. But, but one day it happened that the cows were up on the hill and the calves were down the bottom. The, all the big cows were up on Govardhan Hill and the little cat, the calves, were down at the bottom of the and remember these calves, the little cow, the calves, they're Krishna, but nobody knows that Krishna is playing. And the cowherd boys were taking care of the calves, they're also Krishna. Yeah. And so the cows are up on the hill and they see the calves, and the cows come running down the hill. And the men who are up on the hill taking care of the cows, they go, oh no! 
We don't want these cows to go running down there. Yes, I then you go now, I know, go to Yan Lam, Sita, Moha, they think that you come to him, they tell her. Because the cows will go to the calves and the calves will drink all the milk from the cows. Yeah, my God, you didn't move out who side is, you know, but the rest, you know, we six side, we didn't move out the eye. And Lord Balaram was watching and he was surprised. Because the day Brahma had stolen all the cows and the cowherd boys, Lord Balaram wasn't there that day. And Krishna never told Balaram that, you know, I've you know, I'm taking the place of all the cows. But, but when those cows came running all the way down there to the calves, then Lord Balaram was thinking, well, what's this? You know, why? Because the calves were already grown up. They were not little calves anymore. But so usually the cows, when the calves grow up, then the, the cow, you know, they don't have so much affection. But these cows came down and they were giving so much affection for their cows. And the old men who were up on the hill, they came down and, you know, they were angry, but when they came down, they became very affectionate and being very kind and loving. And they were embracing the cowherd boys, patting their head, and Balaram was saying, wow, so much affection, what's wrong? Then he understood that this is so the, the person who we love more than anyone is Krishna. We don't love the body. But we love the body because Krishna is in that body. So these ladies, these young princesses, 16,100 of them, they all immediately, when they saw this man, Krishna, they immediately thought, oh, this is our husband. And they prayed to Providence. They prayed, oh, please let this man become my husband. All the six, every one of the girls, they all wanted this. And this is not uncommon. Just like when uh, that yogi was meditating and the Subhadrami was in the bottom of the Yamuna to meditate. And then he decided he wanted to get married. And he went to the king and asked the king. Because he knew, you know, the king, the kings have many wives. So they have many children. And so they have daughters to get married. So Tsubari Muni came and asked the king, I want to get married, can you give me one of your daughters? But none of the daughters liked him. So he said, if they want to marry you, they can, but I can't force them. But he's a yogi. He had the yoga powers. So 
he used his yoga powers to transform himself, to make himself look very good. And when he came looking very nice and rejuvenated, then all the doctors, all the king's princesses all wanted to marry. So he got 50 wives. 50. 60. 60. 60. And they were good wives, they all. And when he went to the forest to do austerities, he also followed him. And he became perfect, they also became perfect. So here these 16,100 girls, they all want to get Krishna for a husband. Text number 36. The Lord had the princesses arrayed in clean, spotless garments and then sent them in palanquins to Dwarka together with great treasures of chariots, horses, and other valuables. Text 37. Lord Krishna also dispatched 64 swift white elephants, descendants of Airavata, who each sported four tusks. So, you know, we just understand how powerful this demon was. Well, Lord Krishna has taken away all of his opulence. White elephants are not very common. Right? Devotees would call dancing white elephants. So, but these elephants, they have four tusks. They're really, and they were, they're described as being swift. Means they were very fast. And 64 of them. So Krishna took them to, to, to work. And he sent each of the princesses 16,100 girls in, on palanquins, each one in a palanquin to work. We need a lot of people to carry that many palanquins. It's not a joke, is it? Send them all the way to Dwarka. Okay, we'll stop here today. Maharaj, I, I wonder why the Yeah? You wonder why? I still I still run why they are so opulent. What? A sura, why why they can be so opulent? Because opera should be given to right person. Well, generally we see that the Suryas worship Lord Shiva. So they get some kind of opulence. But they don't get the real opulence. Real opulence is peace of mind and control of the senses. Mm -hmm. 
people who are really opulent, they're blessed with that opulence. the demons, they have, they have all, the, they may get a lot, like Rabban was very opulent. Rani Kashipu was very opulent. Rani Yaksha, they, they like to get gold, they're very attached to these things. They worship the energy. So they get some opulence, they enjoy the facilities of the material. But they don't know how to use it properly. They don't recognize who is the proprietor of all of that. So they cannot actually enjoy this. Krishna is the Supreme Lord, so he can, he can take this, he can use it. Because he's a proprietor. But when we try to take it, we try to enjoy it, you know, our enjoyment will be very limited. Because we're not acting, when we don't act in our proper constitutional position, then we won't feel happy. Our constitutional position is to be the servant of Krishna, to recognize everything belongs to him. But if we take the opulence and try to enjoy it ourselves, that's like a, a thief who's robbed somebody. And so you steal from someone, you're always worried about somebody coming to you know, maybe I'll be caught, maybe somebody will capture me, maybe So we should always be satisfied with what is what is given naturally by the grace of Krishna. Just like you see Sudama in the story of Sudama Brahman, you know, he was very poor, then he became very opulent by the grace of Krishna. <coughs> So how did he accept the opulence? He accepted that opulence in the mood of renunciation. Yeah. He understood that all of this opulence is Krishna's, it belongs to Krishna. So if you have a lot of wealth, you have a lot of money, we use it for Krishna. Build a nice temple. Put on big festivals. And distribute lots of books and prasadam. <laughs> this is the proper use of wealth. Use it to distribute Krishna consciousness. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Thank you, Mahara, for supporting our book fair. The result is quite outstanding this year. Hare Krishna, Lila, my